Hi everyone, guys. I hope you're ready. Um, my name is Alex. I'm originally from Ukraine. I moved to Poland half a year ago. It's a very long story how I got here, speaking here. And um, I'm working in data art. It's a big uh, outsourcing company. We have more than 20 offices in eight countries, I believe. And um, you can find me on, uh, using my website. And also because Slavic names and surnames are complicated, I created a mirror just with links to my social networks. So, uh, first of all, I will say some sad things, um, just to make sure we are on the same page, that functional programming isn't something new. It, it is older than many of us here, actually. And moreover, you shouldn't use it just because it's trendy. So. I will try to give some skeptical talk about benefits and minuses of technology. And I will share my experience after half a year of using Monads intensively on, on a project. So yes, probably you can disagree with those two points, but I hope it's not a problem. So uh, I will talk about Monads. Monads are actually instruments uh, which are not something specific for JavaScript. Monads are um, like its universal approach. And there is a stereotype that monads, uh, how to say, aren't that very useful, you know? And it, it can be illustrated with this picture. Um, and yes, okay, why can we need and why do we need Monads. Actually, we need them for functional programming. We can use them for reactive programming. You might say that it's reactive programming is functional programming. No. And okay. Today I'll talk about numbers. How to add to numbers with JavaScript? Obviously. Okay, but you know it's very old school approach. Everyone can do so and. I want to write some really cool uh, contemporary code, so I can do it like this with current functions with Ramda. But well, it's better, but it's it's still not that perfect as I expected it to be. With Monads, we can do something like this: we can split it in several sprints between several developers and arrange our cool enterprise process. So I guess it is perfection. Um, actually, the idea of this slide is to give the idea that using uh, some technologies everywhere, <coughs> regardless are they useful or not, it's not the best idea. And yes, guys, please don't overcomplicate things. So I guess we are ready. Uh, originally, in object-oriented approach, we have and pretty basic example, how does the organization of code works? Like we have some objects, we can call some methods on it, they mutate something inside this object, and in the end we, and then we can do something with all this data we managed inside. And it, it's pretty much good for a functional approach, it, it works well. Mm, in functional programming it works a little bit differently. So. Functional programming is about functions, function composition. And the idea of monads to try to make something like this, and here we have just three levels uh, of functions, but we can have much, much more. And the idea to make something like this. Uh, and of course, I wanted to notice that A, B, and C are pure functions. So just shortly, they don't access outer scope don't read, don't write, and they don't mutate arguments. So, uh, using functional approach, that example from functional programming will look like this one, which isn't that good, in my opinion. However, it's much better uh, than we'll call all those methods one inside each other. Um, so, monads, they are about function composition. And when it comes to JavaScript, it's the main problem they solve. We don't have problems with strict typing, and for us it's just about function composition. I'm sorry, I need to 
race cursor somewhere. Uh, so, monad pattern. It's pretty much simple thing. Uh, you can read its definition from Wikipedia. And what the hell that, you know? Uh, when I first seen that, I haven't understood what, what is it about. Um, when someone talks about some features, usually you have some exception. Like, for example, hi, we got a sync of eight. Wow, it's, it's freaking amazing. Uh, I don't know, we got ReactiveX. It's cool, we can use it. And when you're talking about technologies, usually some cool features have pretty simple uh, definition, what they do, but not this. And I decided to go deeper and find some short definition that looks like this. And hell not. Still hell not. It's still not clear. And um, I went over many talks on YouTube, and some of them are pretty good. However, they are going too deep, in my opinion. And the idea why I'm staying here is to give this idea as simple as possible. At least I'll try to. And I really like this movie, and I really like this quote. So several <clears throat> months ago, um, my wife uh, demonstrated me this video. Uh, like, here is a cool guy, and he can recognize where is a bow inside. And I got, holy shit, I can use it to explain monads. And I went to our office, took a camera, and made several photos. So I will demonstrate it in pictures. So we have a value. It's just uh, a variable, and it is two, nothing more. We have something, box. And we place this variable inside the box. It is, <coughs> in our example, it is a monad now. And process, when we placed a value inside the box, it's called from. It's unit function which takes a value and places it inside a monad. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. We have several values, like this number and this candy. And, okay, candy don't have a number. It has only color. And here we have also color and value. And the idea is to handle those two um, objects regardless what they have inside and regardless of what type of it. So let's place those two values inside the boxes. And to make it even more complicated, we'll assume that we have three values, but one is empty. It is undefined. So we have three monads. And the idea is that we can apply any function to them and make sure that it will work safely. It won't break. Uh, it won't throw any exception because we have some unexpected data type or something like that. And yes, we have three monads. And okay, let's first apply a function which may, will make all of them green. Okay, we apply it. It's called map, mapping, and we can map any monad as an array. However, it will apply like for the whole value inside the monad. Uh, okay, we applied it. We still don't know what is inside, and we shouldn't care about it. So we can take another method and apply it again. And as you can remind, we don't have value, uh, number value inside the candy. But it doesn't matter. It will work anyway. It won't throw any exception. So we applied those two methods to our monads. And okay, we can uncover them. So we got four and green sticker instead of pink one. Uh, this process is called flatten. The process when we uncover uh, some monad and get some value. You can merge the process of mapping with flattening. It's called flat map. We'll go a little bit further about flat maps. However, I hope idea is quite simple. So let's uncover the second value. It is a candy. It became green, but we don't have any color here. So uh, Mona just executed the first method and validated that we don't have a number here. And well, 
we don't have any errors, but we have modified candy. So what we got outside. So we got color, we got some value. And for empty box, we still have nothing. We don't got, we haven't got any errors like, oh man, you're trying to access some uh, property of undefined, you can't do it, no. Any problems. So it's type agnostic and it's safe. However, it relies on you to write safe methods which you use as maps. So let's go a little bit further. By definition, monad uh, can be described with this interface. So it has some value inside, candy or sticker. It has some from value, which will place our value into the cup. It has some flat map, uh, which will apply some function and return flat, flat value or you can create a new monad inside that method. You can map any function you have and you can just extract the value outside using the method. So again, from we are placing value into the box. Pretty much simple. Map, we are doing something without taking value outside the box. So we have uh, what it does. It <coughs> gives us a plain, fun plain uh, value. We return a plain value, but our monad makes it a new monad again instead of value. And it's called differently in different implementations actually, but bind, chain, flat map, it's actually the same. And okay, it means that we got some value and modified it and afterwards we decide we will return a plain value and we will return a new monad instead. So it looks like something like this. Sorry for capitalized waste letters here. And Fortin is just extraction of value outside the box. <laughs> so about flat map, it's not only about extraction the values outside the box and making some changes with them. It's also about structure a little bit. For example, <coughs> uh, we have uh, something like this. It's just array with three uh, numbers inside. And we will map a function. It's not like any monad map, it's just rig or a map on array. We apply um, some function which will return a new array for each of those values. And we return number, <coughs> source number, multiplied by two and multiplied by 10. So we got something like this here. And with flat map, we can actually make this structure flat, so obviously flat. And it also helpful uh, when it comes to real usage of monads. Uh, I'll say several words a bit a about it a little bit later. And yes, it's all about infrastructure around because, you know, it looks cool. However, it doesn't make sense for adding two numbers. It still doesn't make any sense for adding two numbers. So um, it's still useful because of infrastructure which different libraries provides us. I'm personally using several ones. First one is Monet. It's a point library for uh, just monads. Um, it allow you to, uh, it has some unit functions. Uh, here a unit does not validate anything you draw inside. Here you can do some, um, create monads from some specific data types, like some, it will uh, do something like we did on the pictures. Uh, it will create a monad from empty values or any different values, regardless of the type we have. Uh, we can create none from no. It's useful when we are using flat maps. If we wanna return a new monad instead of old one, we can use either if we are working with several monads or a list. Uh, I guess either and list, uh, uh, familiar for some of you and also we'll get there a little bit later. For example, we can map a new value. Here is just a syntax of the library I'm using. So we created a monad out of number five. We can map any function to it and extract the value outside. It's just for demonstration actually in real life it doesn't make any real sense. However, we added one to five using monads. It looks like this one. Uh, there are actually many things which Monet provides you and 
for example, you can do some filtering like you're doing on um, arrays. However, it won't um, filter anything inside the monad. It will validate the value. It's like some conditional uh, validation, like instead of writing if, etc., etc., you can use filter, and it suits functional style a little bit more, so we can do something like this. And we have the same six we had before on the previous slide, and I filter is, and function validates, is the number bigger than, bigger than 10, and returns what we have inside regardless of the type. And we have now instead of six, because six has not validated the rule we had here. Uh, or for example, we can specify the default value. That is the same example we had here, so uh, here we had now, but here we can specify that if our value does not suit the condition, we can return some default value. And here it starts making some sense, but not always. And uh, here is some, some example <coughs> what we can do inside. Like we have some function, each, it, it validates uh, the number, it's bigger than zero. Uh, and if it is, it returns us a new monad with the same value. Or we can return a monad which is empty. It's just a demonstration what is happening under the hood of filter. So you can write it on your own, do some flat map, and you get the same result. And when it really makes sense, it's in situations that when you're working with unpredictable data sources. For example, it might be some third-party APIs if you're working with uh, backends. It might be API of your server if it's not predictable. Uh, or it might be some user input. In such cases, it's really cool. For form validation, it, it's really reasonable. Uh, it, it saves amount of code you're writing, and here you can see just I create a monad out with some properties like address, name, and there might be many, many fields. And I just specify the set of rules, how I ha can handle every uh, parameter I have there. So. For those tasks, it's really useful. Um, and there is one example, I have taken it for the end. Um, please raise your hands, guys, who used RxJS. Congratulations, you used monads, because uh, RxJS is actually a uh, monadic data structure. You can do map, flat map on them, and they provide you a lot of different uh, stuff, which you can do this. Uh, Observables. I mean, observables are monadic, totally monadic in uh, RxJS. However, uh, from the big specification you have there, like more than 100 me methods available in RxJS, uh, most of them are about uh, such patterns called applicative function, or it's about interacting between several monads. In the very beginning, I I presented you example how to add numbers, and it used the same patterns. So it's more about how you interact between your observables. You got several observables. You want to unite them, or you want to like filter the latest results. It's about that pattern. And actually, it's pretty much it. Uh, I'd like to ask answer any questions you have, and while I'm answering, feel free to reach me anywhere. So 